In this session, we'll be looking at some practical machine learning algorithms. The one we studied earlier are usually used in a slightly modified manner in real life implementation. So we will be looking at some of these modifications in this session. So let's begin. The first uh, thing we are going to look at is decision trees. Now we already have studied decision trees in great detail. Uh, some of the uh, things which were missing earlier, we'll be going to deal with them in this session. Uh, so the first thing we are going to deal with is numerical attributes. Now the standard method to deal with numerical attribute is to go ahead with the binary splits. Now the steps to decide where to split. So basically you have your numerical attributes, you arrange them in an increasing or say decreasing order and then you divide them into two halves. Now you basically need to decide where to do the split. Now, we do two things for this we evaluate the info gain for every possible split point of attribute and then we choose the best split point we already have studied how we use info gain and uh, we use this uh, to basically get our best split point but again this step is computationally intensive uh, now uh, to show you an example we have our temperature attribute from our weather data we have arranged it in increasing order as you can see and below we have written the class for this particular uh, for each and every data. Now we divide it into uh, two halves uh, for temperature less than 7.5 and for temperature greater than 7.5. We calculate the information for this uh, division. It comes out to be 0.939. So we basically consider all the division that we can do and we choose the one where we get the best gain. Uh, and the th next thing we are going to deal with is missing values. Now uh, to deal with missing value, we split instances with missing values into pieces. A piece going down a branch receives a weight proportional to the popularity of the branch. The sum of the weights is one. And this is how we deal with missing values. The next thing we are going to do is pruning. Pruning is basically making the decision tree less complex by removing cases of overfitting. Uh, the two types of pruning that we have is pre-pruning that is trying to decide during the tree building and then we have post pruning that is doing pruning after the tree has been constructed. The two types of pruning that are generally used are subtree replacement and subtree raising. Uh, to do decide uh, whether to do pruning or not. Okay, so we have a case, we have a tree, we are building it. For example, we are doing pre-pruning now. How to decide whether we should you know, prune the tree or not. We basically calculate the error rate before the pruning and after the pruning. If the error rate after the pruning is greater than the uh, error rate before the pruning, then we don't need to do the pre pruning. Otherwise, we'll go ahead with the pruning. Now, uh, as we told you, the uh, two types of post pruning that we usually use are subtree replacement and subtree raising. Uh, this is a, a diagram showing subtree raising. As you can see, we have C, which is a child node of B. And uh, after subtree raising, uh, we basically replace the uh, node B by node C. And uh, other than 1, 2, 3, uh, having, uh, C having its child node as 1, 2, 3, now it has 1 dash, 2 dash, and 3 dash. So this basically demonstrates what do we mean by subtree raising. Coming to subtree replacement, the other type of force pruning we use is, uh, look at this tree. This is our original tree. And this is our tree after we have done subtree replacement. As you can see, this complete node working hours per week has been replaced with a leaf node bat. This is an example of subtree replacement. Now we will move ahead to classification rule. We already did our covering algorithm, uh, the prism algorithm in one of our previous session. Uh, if you remember in the prism algor in the covering algorithm, we use the P by T ratio uh, as a criteria for choosing test. So basically P is the number of positive instances and T is the number of total instances. And we try to maximize this ratio. Now, if we try to maximize the P by T ratio, basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to maximize the accuracy. Now this is good, but the other uh, test which we can we use is P log small p by small t minus log capital P by capital T. Here again, the small p and small t represents the same thing, but capital P is the number of positive instances before the test was added and t is the number of instances uh, before again the test was added. Uh, when we try to maximize this 
expression what we are doing is we are maximizing the number of positive instances even if we get a lesser accuracy so what we are trying to do we are trying to cover more and more positive instances over here whereas in this particular case we are trying to increase the accuracy irrespective of the fact that we might not be covering more uh, instances uh, now we come to generating good rules so what we can do uh, basically sometime what happens is uh, based on training data we might have a case where we do overfitting of our rules so to avoid that we use these following steps we can remove overfitting by either pruning of trees like we started in the previous case during construction or after they have been fully constructed to prune during construction we check each newly added test so after we add a test in each particular stage we check the test we basically check the error rate on the pruning set this is basically an entirely different set which we have to uh, uh, demonstrate our pruning so we check the error rate after the test has been added and before the uh, test has been added on our pruning set and if the error increases then we remove the test which we uh, added uh, just which we just added in this step and this is how basically we used pruning set now we come to the step where we obtain rules from partial decision trees so basically what we do is we build decision tree not complete decision tree so we build partial decision tree and uh, based on the leaf nodes in uh, present in this partial decision tree we derive our rules so this is the algorithm which we use to build our partial decision tree uh, we'll be demonstrating it using an example so what we do is uh, we initially start with the root node just like we do in a normal decision tree uh, get the nodes 2 3 and 4 again using the normal decision tree algorithm now basically we arrange these 2 3 and 4 nodes in increasing order of their entropy and uh, we deal with them in this order only so since uh, in our case 3 has the lowest entropy so we'll be dealing with 3 uh, first we'll be dealing with 3 uh, we again use our decision tree algorithm to divide 3 into 2 nodes one is this node 5 and the other is a leaf node now we'll be dealing with this 2 nodes uh, the entropy of this leaf node is 0 but uh, which is least which is lesser than uh, that of node 5 but since we cannot extend a expand a uh, leaf node further so we'll deal with a uh, node 5 over here we expanded uh, node 5 into 2 leaf node and now what we will do is before we uh, uh, now we are done over here so the next step will be to move to node 4 which uh, which uh, if you arrange 3 4 and node uh, 2 in uh, increasing order of their entropy so after node 3 we have node 4 but before we deal with node 4 we do one thing we basically calculate uh, the error uh, we basically try to reduce this partial uh, this uh, particular part of the tree to something lesser and uh, the only reason the only factor which we check uh, before we do this conversion is the error rate if this gives us a lesser error rate than this then we will go ahead with a reduced tree like the, which like what we have over here so from this stage we move to this stage we did we did a reduction we uh, basically replaced the whole node 5 with a leaf node and from over here we again reduce the whole node 3 and the sub to sub childs to a leaf node and after we are done with this we move to node 4 uh, again we expand the node 4 into two leaf node now what we notice is that we cannot reduce node 4 uh, and the sub, two, uh, sub childs to a single leaf node like what we did in the case of node 3 and we stop our uh, partial decision tree making at this particular step we won't exceed further now we have uh, leaf nodes over here and each leaf node will give us rules now choose the leaf which gives which covers the greatest number of instances to get the best rule and this is how we get rules from partial decision trees the next thing we are going to deal with extending linear model we already deal with linear model we did the perceptron method also in our previous session now we basically extend them the first uh, technique we are going to deal is uh, support weather machine support vector machine the algorithm for learning linear classifier they use maximum marginal hyperplane technique so basically uh, th by using this technique we remove overfitting uh, so what we do is the instances closer to the maximum we have a maximum maximum marginal hyperplane and only the instances closest to the maximum marginal hyperplanes are support are, are called as support vector and only they are considered rest all instances can be ignored uh, we'll be looking at this uh, example uh, this is our maximum marginal hyperplane 
and this is our instance set so as you can see these three uh, instances or what we call support factor are the closest to the maximum marginal hyperplane and we only need to consider these three instances and rest of the instances can be ignored and this is how we deal with overfitting in uh, support vector machines uh, the, the equation of the hyperplane the maximum marginal hyperplane can be written in this form x equals to b plus summation of alpha i y i a i dot a this is a dot product i basically i will vary for uh, one till the number of support factors we have and how do we know uh, a vector is a support factor all instances for which alpha i is greater than zero that they are support vector the value of b and alpha uh, are determined using some uh, commonly available software packet so and the hyperplane can also be written using kernel so basically we do a transformation and we represent this equation in this form so basically uh, this particular portion is called a kernel here this particular example of alpha, uh, ai dot a to the power n is a uh, example of polynomial kernel we can use different kernels over here so a kernel is basically a transformation from one dimension to one dimensional configuration to another dimensional configuration the next thing we come to is multi-layer perceptron now we can create a network of perceptron to approximate arbitrary target concepts Multilayer perceptron is an example of an artificial neural networks and a multilayer perceptron consists of uh, three layers input layer hidden layers and output layer a hidden layer can have more than one hidden layer a uh, structure of uh, multi linear multilayer perceptron is usually found by experimentation so the structure uh, is uh, can be done only by experimentation the parameters can be found using a technique called back propagation so just uh, let us look at an example of multi-layer perceptron so uh, you can see four diagrams over here uh, this particular figure is basically the representation of ZOR uh, the ZOR operation which we have and this is a representation of NOT and this is AND and this is OR so basically we use uh, AND, uh, OR and NOT which are normal perceptron they are not multi-layer perceptron and we combine these three to get a representation of ZOR so as you can see in this uh, ZOR representation we have three layers the layer of input attribute this is the input layer then uh, this particular node C is the, our output layer and these three A, B and this bias in between are our hidden layers so this is an example of multi-layer perceptron the structure of this uh, suppose we want to determine this multi-layer multi perceptron the structure of this multi-layer uh, perceptron has to be determined using experimentation but these weights which you see over here they can be uh, determined using a technique called back propagation now we come to back propagation uh, we represent our output as uh, fx equals to 1 upon 1 plus exponential to the power minus x very similar to what we did in logistic regression uh, the error function which we have is half of y minus fx raised to the power 2 and basically we try to minimize this error and uh, while minimizing after some manipulation we reach at this expression now uh, what we basically need just to calculate the above expression we calculate the above expression for all training instances and we do wi equal wi is basically uh, a predetermined value of weight for the ith instance equals to wi minus l d e d w and this is how we determine our weights now we come to clustering uh, uh, the, uh, we studied key means clustering in our previous session uh, where we used to, uh, where we need to know the number of clusters in the beginning itself and we need to know the clusters uh, by ourselves so we'll be looking at a technique called incremental clustering where we don't need to know the number of clusters initially and they are basically determined by the algorithm itself so what are the steps of incremental clustering now tree consists of initially the tree consists of empty node we add instances one by one and uh, after each instance need to be added we update the tree at uh, appropriately at each stage now to update uh, and find the right leaf for an instance we basically use a factor called as category utility uh, uh, the updation may involve restructuring the tree 
the restructuring basically uh, the only two things that we do in restructuring are merging and replacement now basically this is an example of incremental clustering here we have a root node we add one instance then we uh, add instances and at each step we basically calculate whether you know we should uh, add an instance as a child of a already existing instance or should we uh, at what level should we add that instance so uh, to determine this we ca calculate the category utility at each level and here you can see we added uh, all the instances one by one uh, over here we notice that okay uh, the node uh, e and node f uh, should be a part of should be child of some uh, particular node and uh, we need to do this was again determined by category utility and just using category uh, category utility and the replacement techniques we finally arrive at this uh, this particular structure this particular tree like structure and as you can see we have a hierarchical uh, cluster uh, clustering over here like the uh, initial root node divides into two and there is further division and this is how we do incremental clustering again we did not need to fix any value for k uh, the only complicated part for this is to determine the category utility which we won't be which we won't be covering over here the next algorithm that we'll be dealing is em algorithm so em stands for expectation maximization uh, we basically generalize k means to probabilistic setting so we have a combination of k means for probabilistic setting uh, we have a iterative procedure uh, where we have our expectation step initially where we calculate cluster probability for each instance then we have our maximization step where we estimate probability parameters from cluster we store our cluster probability as instance weight and we stop when uh, our improvement is negligible so uh, kind of uh, like similar to k-means only uh, but other than the fact that the internal steps are very different so this is em algorithm uh, now this brings us to the end of the session. So we did some of the modification to our basic algorithm to uh, enable them to handle some of our exceptional cases and to improve their performance. And uh, these are just a very small subset of practically used machine learning algorithm, but nonetheless they will help you uh, in laying a firm foundation. All of these algorithm can be demonstrated in Weka. We have a special session for that. And uh, so this brings us to the end of the session. Thank you.